Okay, now we're going to find all the zeros, um, not just the real ones, and factor it even if it has an i. So in this problem, p of x, you have this quartic, and you're given the zero of i. Well, because there's a zero of i, that means that negative i is also a zero. So in order to factor it, what I'm going to do, I have these two factors already, x minus i and x plus i. So what I can do is I'm going to multiply those out, and I know because these are conjugates, it's that difference of squares pattern, x squared minus i squared, which is going to become x squared plus 1. Okay, so because I have that, what I can do now is take this quartic I don't have any missing terms and what I'm going to do is divide it by x squared plus 1. So I'm looking at the first two terms and x squared times x squared becomes x to the fourth. I'm going to multiply it back through. And that becomes x squared, which should be there. So that's going to be, I'm going to write that under that term. So I have x to the fourth plus x squared. And then I'm going to go through and subtract the negative x cubed comes down. This becomes negative 6x squared. And I'm going to bring down the negative x. And then from there, what multiplies be negative x cubed. So that's going to be negative x. Multiply that back through x squared plus 1. And I'm going to have negative x cubed minus x, and then I'm going to go back through and change my signs because I'm subtracting it. So I, I combine those, those cancel out. Negative 6x squared comes down. Those cancel out, and I have negative 6. And then I'm going to multiply by negative 6, multiply that through, negative 6 times x squared plus 1, and that becomes negative 6x squared minus 6. Go through and change the signs. Now, because those were factors, this should come out to 0, and they cancel out. It should have a remainder of 0. Let me change this to orange. Minus 6. And what I can do now is take this quadratic and if I can factor it I would factor it which this does x minus 3 times x plus 2 and now I have the factored form now I'm going to include the factored form of that x squared plus 1 which is going to be x minus i times x plus i so I have x minus 3 x plus 2 times x minus i times x plus i. And that's my factored form. My zeros or my roots are positive 3, negative 2, and plus or minus i. For finding all the zeros now, including the imaginary ones, you're writing the factored form, including the imaginary factors. Okay, in this one I'm given the 0, 1 plus i. So in order to find the factor of this quartic, or uh, the quartic, I'm going to do x minus 1 plus i times x minus the conjugate, 1 minus i. Because I also know if 1 plus i is a root, then 1 minus i 
is a root or a zero. So in order to multiply those out, I'm going to distribute that and this becomes x minus 1 squared minus i squared. So the x minus 1 squared becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1 and then the i squared minus i squared becomes plus 1. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 2. And I'm going to do the same thing and take this polynomial x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared plus 2x minus 2 and divide that by x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole dividing process, but I have the work here. My sign changes are in blue. Um, so I get x squared If I can write it. Okay, there we go. x squared minus 1, which then factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1, along with the other factors of x minus one minus i and x minus one plus i. So that's my factored form. My zeros are one plus i, one minus i, negative one, and positive one. Okay, factor by grouping should go into your factoring foldable in the next um, the next tab and if you use the AC method we use factor by grouping in the AC method but if you ever get to a term if whether it's a cubic of four terms or a quartic of four terms you can check to see if it can factor by grouping um, and if it is it might be a little bit quicker than other ways to to get it down to the quadratic to factor it so what you first do is group the first two pair, group the second two, and factor out the common factor, which in this first one is going to be x squared. Then I'm going to be left with x minus 1. If you factor the whole term out, you got to still have that 1. And then on this one, I'm going to factor out a 2, and I'm left with x minus 1. These two parentheses should match, and I'm left with x squared plus 2 times x minus 1. And if you solve this for the zeros, x squared plus 2 is equal to 0, you can find the zeros, and that way you can then write it in factored form. I can take the square root of it. x is equal to i times the square root of 2. So that means that that's going to factor into x minus i squared of 2. You should have a plus or minus here. And then x plus i squared of 2. And then x minus 1. And that's factored form for this cubic. I'm going to do the same thing here. It just has to be four terms. But in order for it to work, you have to get these, when you factor out the greatest common factor, these two parentheses have to be the same, and that's the key. Okay? When I have a negative in this third term, that needs to stay on the inside, so that's why I put that plus in between them, because they're not being multiplied, they're still being added. But I do need that negative on the inside. I factor out my common factor, which is x cubed. I'm left with x minus 3 
factor out a negative 1, and that's going to become positive x. This becomes negative 3, and see how these are the same, so I'm able to factor that this way. I have x minus 3, x cubed minus 1. We're not going to go over factoring the difference of cubes. Um, so for right now, this is all, this is what you're going to have. Okay, that's it for this one.